Welcome to video number four. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can get a specific user as a JSON object and how we're going to validate the ID of the user that we want to fetch from the database. If you have not been following this series, look at the description below this video and then you will find all other videos. Let's get started. We are going to go to VS Code now and let's see why I have it here. We are going to open not this. Let's leave the get users open for now because I'm going to you do the get user. And the difference is that when we were getting all the users, we fetch all of them. And in the get user, we want to get a specific user. So in Postman, if I run get all users, I get all the users. But I also have this path to get a specific user. And over here, I should be getting just one user. This data is hard coded, so this has to be changed. The idea is that in here, in the address bar, if we pass a variable called ID1, then we should get the user data for user1. If we say 2 for user2, and so on. So I will delete this. That was from a previous project I had. Let's rerun it. And then I will say ID equals one. All right, now I see what's happening. Whenever I put ID here, it actually pops up there automatically. Sorry for the confusion, guys. So this is working fine. So now that we have the ID one, we have to validate if this ID is actually a number or not. That's what we can do to start with. Once we connect to the database, we are going to do the statement to fetch this, this specific user. But before you even connect to it, we need to test if the ID is valid. Remember that if the ID is not valid, we should send an error message back to the user. And therefore, we can just grab this function here from the get users file and check out the video number three if you want to see more about it. And then we paste it in there. So this is the error function that we will be using. Let's do the test. So we're going to check if. If it is not set, this is called defensive programming, but the, by the way, you never test for the best case scenario. You always go for the worst case scenario. So you have to defend the system. So we say if not, is set. And then we're going to check the ID of the user. So we're going to try to grab the ID from the address bar, from the URL. And if we do not get an ID, we're just going to error it. So we say error, and we're going to pass the first argument that will say ID missing. And the second argument will be the line number. So we're checking if the ID is there or not. So I'm going to save this. And if everything goes correctly, I will just send this hardcoded data back to the user. So we check it and then we get the hardcoded data. Now I will take the ID away and then we're going to check it again and we get the ID missing message. So it's not just enough to say that you have the ID and the ID is just there because then you will get the data because you have this variable. You also need to check that the ID is a valid ID, meaning that it has to be a digit. It cannot be one A, it cannot be that because that's not an ID. It cannot be that because that's not an ID. An ID should not contain letters. Well, at least for now that we're doing this with MySQL or MariaDB. In all the databases, the ID could be an alphanumeric character. So we're going to check that the ID is a valid number. Not the length of it, because an ID could be one as it could be 9999. We don't know how many users we will have in the system. We just have to check that it is a number. To do that, PHP has a nice function. It's called C type digit. So we're going to say if not, C type digit. And then we're going to pass this ID. This is just saying that if the ID is not only numbers, we're going to send this error message. So we're going to say that not the ID is not is missing, but we'll say ID not valid. 
we send that back to the user. Let's try it. We go to Postman. If we send one, that's a valid ID. If we say one A, the ID is not valid. If we say A1, the ID is not valid. If we say 9999, it's valid. So that was the validation process of it. Then we connect to the database. So we do not waste computer resources. In here, we're going to do the try catch, as I have previously explained. And why not? And instead of typing all of it, we already have this try catch. I will just copy it and I will paste it. That's the advantage of it. So I'm doing this actually in video for all of it. We're going to prepare the statement. I know that you want to just hard code the SQL command here. You should never do that. You will get into a lot of issues eventually. So I will just go to the browser. And then I'm going to create the SQL command in PHP my admin. Let's just run it. And we're going to say select all from users where the ID equals let's do a one. And you could do this limit one because you know there's one user with that ID. Some people say that you must have this. I know that it is indexed and I know that's unique, so you shouldn't have it. But just to learn the limit on it, let's just add it. Control enter, we get user one there. If we say that ID is two, control enter, we get B. So this is the command we need to use. Therefore, I copy it and I will paste it in VS Code. Select all from users with ID equals, and now I'm going to show you something. You cannot put here the ID because if you do a get, and then you pass the ID in there. Well, you could, but then you're risking to get SQL injections, even though you have validated the ID. To avoid injections as much as possible, you create a wildcard, a placeholder, actually. That's a placeholder. So what I'm saying is, select all from users where the ID equals this placeholder. And now I'm going to use the placeholder underneath. So to make this bulletproof against SQL injections, I will say that the query is going to bind a value and I will select the ID placeholder. And what I want to put in instead of this ID, I want to put the get ID. This is no SQL injection. If you do that, you have protected the system against those type of injections. Then we're going to execute the query and I will leave this exactly as it was before. You will get an status one and then we're going to pass the rows and then you will see how I fix a little bit this code. So now I have no data because this user is not found in the system. So it just sends an empty array Thing about this an empty array a user should be just a json object i'm only getting one user so if i do a one i get an array with one user if you consider this scenario you should know that you don't need array because you only get one element you can have it but i don't think you should so instead of fetching all this all gives you an array you just say fetch and fetch will get just one value and as soon as you have done that, you have an API that gets you a user, only one user. If I do 1A, that is not valid. If I fetch a user that doesn't exist, we get this false. There's no data. This user doesn't exist. Could we send here a status of zero if the user is not found? You could do that. You can say, well, if the user is not found, let's send a zero. But in this case, I'm sending a false. Mm. Okay, guys, I'm going to check for that. Yeah, I don't like this. So I'm just going to say that I get a row and here I get a row. And I'm going to add the if statement here. If, if the row count, that's a count statement. If the row, so I will say if no row let me just do this. If not row, I will send an error to the user 
I'm just doing this live as I told you before and then the error will say user not found and then I will display the line number let me see if this fixes the issue there user not found and if I pass a 1 I get the user a 2 a 3 user not found I like this it makes sense all right guys so i will see you in the next video i hope you are liking what i'm doing keep in mind that this is to teach you so you can see my logic you can see the way i think the way i debug so hopefully you appreciate this and you give me a subscribe like and notifications guys see you in video number five